Okay, now we're gonna go over faces and polys and lines and all that good stuff. And that's basically how you turn a cube into an actual object or like a person or a car or something. Now, there's a lot about this, so I'm gonna have to sum it up pretty simply. So, because I can talk for hours about this stuff, but I only have like 15 minutes. So if there's anything you'd like to know, comment and I'll see what I can do. I'll probably make a cool video or something. So let's get started. Let's create a cube. Now, at the moment, we can change its size and its segments and its fillet and all that stuff. Because it's a cube. Like, it has this little symbol. And I think I went over this earlier. When you press C, it becomes just a polygon object and it no longer has like the cube options so we'll undo that and add some segments now segments are how many divides it has so see now that I've done that I'm just quickly undo that to show you what it does hit C and now over here we'll change our mode we'll go to faces mode and you notice it goes blue and I can select the faces they go orange once I've selected them and I can affect them like an object, I can move them, I can scale them, I can rotate them, I can do all sorts of stuff to them. And now that's just faces. And we also have lines. Same thing, but I select lines instead of faces. And then you have vertexes, which are individual points. Now, what does that all mean? Basically, if I add more segments, I have more points of control. I can affect it a lot easier. And that's that in, in a nutshell. But there's a whole bunch of functions you can do to them to make it good, like better and all these nifty tricks and stuff. So, Command A to select them all. And maybe I added some segments, but I want more. This can be done by going function, subdivide, or US. So, we'll use the hotkeys. US. This comes up in the subdivide box, how many subdivisions I want. Whether I want it to be a hyperneb subdivide. And we covered what hyperneb's were, it basically does the same thing. So we'll go OK, and that's divided each face with like one line in each direction. So now, other functions we've got right click, we can do bridge. Uh, I'll show you what bridge does. Let's delete that face. Bridge, and what it did was it tried to stick those two together. Didn't do a very good job of it. Also, when they go blue like that, that means you're looking at the other side of it, and that's not good because that if I if I put this into a game, those blue bits wouldn't show up. So that didn't work very well, did it? What else do we got? We got close polygon hole. That's probably what you should use in those situations. Um, knife. Now the knife is good for. Well, I don't exactly know what it's good for. I can't think of a situation where I'd use it, except for maybe if you were modeling something organic, and you wanted it to have random lines across it. So we'll go try and cut it. it only cut that one I had selected. That's because I got. Uh, restrict to selection on. So I want to do that. Now when I slash it, it cuts right through the thing. Now I could use loop select or something. But also it's only done it where I could see it. So undo that, go uncheck visible only, do again, and now we have a complete ring of those. Okay. Um, bevels and extrudes. Bevel basically just 
like as it pulls it out, it makes it skinnier until a point where it swaps over, and that's you want to keep it below that. So about here is where is where you'd want to stop. So that creates like a a smoothed out edge. And if I do that, see it's like soft, like a button or something. Okay. God damn it. One second. Go away. <laughs> anyway, um, can't spell for shit. Um, extrude does this, it does the same thing, but without making it skinnier. So that's like if you wanted to make solid bricky objects. If I was like modeling a robot or something. And of course, I can do it again, again, and again, and again. So I have more, as I said, more points and areas of effect. Okay. Select another one. Okay, um, matrix extrude. Now this has a few functions. What it does, it's like, once it, it does eight steps. So one is it moves it out 50 and then scales it by this and then rotates it by this and then does it again and again and again and basically it makes like a hook spike thing. Like so. Now these things are really easy to mess up. I will show you. See. Oh. Ah, done. Look what I've gone and done. It's gigantic. And also they can go in the opposite direction. Uh, if it wants to do it. What the hell? I give up. You can do it yourself. <laughs> hey. Um. Smooth shift. Oh, another thing about the um. Extrude. I don't have to actually click and drag. What I can do is I can go offset. Ten. Enter. Now it's done it exactly 10. This is very precise. If you wanted to do something that was really needed to be accurate, to like bridge a gap or something. So that's faces and stuff in Cinema 4D. Enjoy. Yeah.